Welcome to Everyday Light. Today we're going to talk uh, together about the spiritual discipline of journaling. Now, before you turn off this podcast or video, stay with me for a moment. I know for some of you, journaling feels like a burden of requirement and you may avoid it like the plague. But I want to share with you today a technique that I have used for years that I love and uh, share with you also some of the pitfalls and the wonderful things that I have experienced in journaling over the years. Adele Calhoun in her Spiritual Disciplines Handbook um, says that journaling is a way of paying attention to our lives, a way of knitting the vast ball of our experiences into something with shape that attests to the state of our soul. The ongoing nature of a journal catalogs the journey of a soul into God. It reveals how we hammer out our identity as a Christ follower through the ups and downs of daily routines, as well as in times of crisis. So we are forgetful people, just like the Israelites of long ago, who the Lord rescued from bondage out of Egypt and how quickly they desired to go back to the familiar. They forgot all the ways that God provided for them in the wilderness, uh, how he got water from the rock and manna from the heavens and led them in pillars of cloud and fire. And we can do the same thing in our own lives. We can forget just all the many ways that God shows up, how he provides, how merciful and loving he is to us as he transforms our souls. And so journaling is really my favorite thing. Although I have had a love-hate relationship with journaling over the years, um, because as I just shared with you the other day, the, the practice of reflection in looking back over what I have written, I have been blown away by the faithfulness of God. And I promise you that you will be as well. So there is no one right way to journal. You can journal in the frequency, in the time, in the type of way that you want to. There is complete freedom in that for you. But I do want to share the technique that I was taught by my mentor, Margie Harriman. And it comes from her book, Letters from for Krista. And I'm going to put that link in the information for this uh, video and podcast so that if you're interested in her book, which is a study of Titus 2 for women, you can find that. Um, and it is also in my book, Growing Your Life in Christ, which is a Titus 2 study for young women. But this is not just for women. It is for anyone. So what I have done as my practice as my rule of life over the years is to read that one year Bible reading um, that you may have read together with me. So I do my daily Bible reading and then I journal and I journal in this Margie quiet time method, as I like to call it. So it involves eight sections, Psalms, Confession, Old Testament, Thanksgiving, New Testament, requests, proverbs, and listening. And you don't do all these all in one day. For me, my habit nowadays is to take one per day, but you can do as many of these sections as you have time allotted for in a day and you feel God leading you to. And before I go any further, I want to mention that I will also link a blog to this that describes this method, gives you a printable for how to do this so that you don't have to frantically write down notes. You can just sort of listen to how this is supposed to work. So if your day, if you're just starting, you're going to start with Psalms. So what I would do is take whatever Psalm reading that I did in my one year daily Bible reading, and I would really just see what stood out to me. You know, what was the Lord speaking to me in that? Was there a specific scripture? Was there an idea that came out? And I will just journal about that. I might record the scripture itself, not the entire Psalm that I read, um, but the piece that spoke to me. And then importantly, 
why. Because I've done it other ways. I've just written down the scripture. And then when I go back and read it, I wonder, what what was it that day uh, that the Lord was speaking through that? So write down why that stood out to you um, uh, and whatever God is showing you through that psalm. The next section is confession. And so as Margie teaches it, it is three things, only three, Lord. (laughs) Could you show me the three things that I need to confess to you at this moment? And the purpose of confession is not to wallow in shame or regret over behavior, but to really recognize then that when God reveals sin to us in our lives, that it is a gift because it is an opportunity to seek light instead of darkness. And in so doing, as you write down whatever that thing might be, so let's say it is grumbling. For me, I can be guilty of grumbling. Okay, so I'm gonna confess one of my three things, grumbling, and then I'm gonna draw an arrow to what God would call me to instead, a way that he might be desiring to transform me in this. Um, And the verse that comes to mind is do all things without complaining and disputing, right? Um, And so perhaps it is, I'm going to write and draw an arrow and write life-giving words, right? Or, um, you know, focus on the things that are good. Uh, When I find myself grumbling, I could draw an arrow and say, focus on the good. Whatever God is going to bring to mind, I'm going to bring that before him. Three things three confessions, and then arrows drawing toward what God is calling me to. Now, I want to also say in this point that um, don't be discouraged if you find that it is the same points of confession over and over and over again, right? God is so so kind to us that he is such a patient teacher in our lives. And so it's very common, it certainly is in my life, um, that some of the same issues come up over and over again. And it's okay to revisit them um, with the Lord and just say, what should I know now, Lord? Or what is the unique thing today that I need to look at in this? The next session is uh, Old Testament. So again, whatever your Old Testament reading is for that daily reading, same way you did the Psalms. What was that scripture or what was that story or what really stood out to you and why? The next section is Thanksgiving. So again, I write three things that I'm thankful for. And what's most helpful to me as I go back and reread is to look at specifics. Okay, so yes, I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my home, thankful for my health. But what thing was I thankful for today? I was thankful for that. Those moments really connecting with my husband as we sat in front of the fire that he made, you know, and and that's going to bring and maybe even what we talked about. Right. And so when I reread that later, it's going to bring to mind what that circumstance was. Uh, So the more specific you can be in your gratitude, the more helpful and also the more revealing that is um, as far as what is your heart's desire at this moment. The next section is New Testament. So just like Psalms and Old Testament, take that one year daily reading, focus on the New Testament and ask the Lord, "What, what is it here? What would you have to say to me in these scriptures? and journal about that. The next section is requests. So these are your prayer requests um, for yourself, for others, um, those those prayers and petitions that we just want to record um, because we're going to be able to look back and see what we've asked for and see how the Lord has answered those requests. Our final section of scripture is Proverbs. Same way as the other sections, um, which proverb oftentimes in the one year reading, we're really only looking at one or two. So there's not a lot of opportunity to say, um, okay, which one? Um, But what what should I take from this today, Lord? Their proverbs are such wonderful wisdom literature, and we can really learn something from each and every proverb. And they tend to pop up at times that are very instructive in our lives. So just being open to what God is showing us in the proverbs. The last section is listening. 
And this is the most amazing and somewhat the most challenging section because it's less directive. So in listening, you're just going to sit still and ask Jesus, what would you have me to hear or to know today? And journal about whatever that is. Now, for me, sometimes I sit in the quiet and I don't hear anything. (laughs) And sometimes it is about just being still and silent. And that is the exercise. And that's okay. We're not going to manufacture something in our own strength to happen during our listening time. There are other days that I know I can't wait to get to my listening day because I know the Lord has already spoken this theme, this message, this scripture multiple times. And my favorite thing is to just go in, go into my concordance in my at the back of my Bible and say, okay, I just keep hearing that song about the lighthouse and that is speaking to me. And what is it about lighthouses? You know, um, whatever it is, um, I already know that I just so want to go deeper with God in that. Sometimes if it's a particular scripture that comes up, I go to like a commentary like Matthew Henry and I read his extended commentary on that section and I'm just open to journaling about whatever I might find in there. But again, sometimes it's it's uh, just being still. So being open to using that time, however God would have you to use it. So that is my journaling method. Now here are the pitfalls and the pluses. <laughs> so over the years, I, I, I like to take anything that I try and try to make it better. So I decided that instead of just doing one or two sections a day, um, I would try to do all the sections every day. And that just ruined the whole thing, honestly, because um, maybe if I had unlimited time, that would work really well. Just being open to doing all of those things every day would be amazing. But in the seasons of life that I have been in, raising children and being busy at home, um, I've not found time for that. So for me, it became a box checking exercise um, and uh, a a requirement for me. So that didn't work very well. And um, I personally think there is something to be gained from doing this every day day, every single day. But I've also learned the value in giving myself the freedom of saying, you know what, there there are days and times when I'm going to hear from the Lord in a different way, um, that uh, I have to be open to his interruptions of even my good intentions and good schedules and good journaling. So there are days and times and even seasons where I have set this aside Um, And in this past year has been a season really for me to set it aside quite a bit and recognize in so doing the great value that it has added to my life. And so as I start this new year, uh, as I'm recording this in January, I'm really excited to dive back into this journaling rhythm that I use. Um, and I just am passionate to share it with you because I hope that you will also experience the fruit that it bears in your life. Love you all. Have a wonderful day.